So in this video, I'm going to explain the steps of the Mona Lisa eye sculpture. Um, I got an example. So here's, here's a finished example, and we call it the Mona Lisa Eye Sculpture because like the original Mona Lisa painted by Leonardo da Vinci, um, the eyes on these, we're going to use an effect that's going to make it look like the eyes follow you. So you can see as, as I move this lion head back and forth, the eyes look like they're following you. So. Here's the steps to the process. First, you gotta come up with an idea. Then you gotta do a mock-up. Then you be begin your construction, and then just the first part of construction, and then we're gonna stop, or you're gonna build the pieces, then we're gonna paint, and then we're gonna put it all together, and that's uh, step five, which is the stage two of construction, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add that eyepiece and we're going to use uh, perspective to make those eyes follow you when you walk in front of the sculpture. So stage one, the idea. So here I've roughly drawn out an idea for this sculpture. It's based on me. So it's a big fat head with glasses and a goatee. So with this, I'm just trying to think about what kind of face. Obviously, you have to do a face because this thing has eyes. So what kind of face do I want to make? So after I do this, I might sit and think. So one of the criteria is that this has to have four layers. So like on this one that I just showed you, layer one is the, the main, which she actually supported with a piece of foam board, but then she, she cut her paper piece is a little bit bigger so that she could add those little frills like that. So layer one is the main, is this part back here. And if I put it sideways, layer two are the ears. Now the ears are both on layer two despite the fact that they are separate pieces. They're separate pieces, but because they are one layer above layer one, they're only layer two. Now she also has I don't know if you can see it because of the frills, but she also made a, a support piece on the bottom. So that support piece, even though it's not seen, is also part of layer two. And that's just there so that this head doesn't rock back and forth. Gives a little stability to the bottom of the head. So layer one is this, layer two is the ears. So layer three is this face part that's on top, directly on top of the ears. And then layer four is this mouthpiece. Now she actually went above and beyond and put a fifth layer, put that nose on there. So this actually has five layers. Um, the requirement is only four. But now, once you have your idea, you have to think, all right, what's gonna be layer four? So uh, wh where are my four layers? So in this, maybe my ear is layer one, my face is layer two, my goatee is layer three, and my nose, is layer four. I'm not sure what's going to happen with uh, my hair and my glasses. I don't know what layer they're going to land on, but as long as I have layer one for the ear, layer two the face, layer three the goatee, and layer four the nose, the glasses and the hair can really go anywhere. So they'll just land on whatever layer, uh, wherever they land, they land. So that's the idea. Now I have to do a mock-up. So for my mock-up, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut all of these pieces separately out of just scrap paper. So this is not the size that my final is going to be. I only want to check to make sure that my plan of what layers are going to go where, this is where I check and see if that's really going to work. So I'm gonna move the laptop, and hopefully you'll be able to see this. <clears throat> so, hopefully this isn't too, doesn't make anybody seasick. So, now I'm going to, just as a double check, 
I'm going to build my mock-up layer by layer. So layer one, I'm going to put the ears down. Layer two is going to be the head. Layer three is the goatee. Maybe the glasses also end up on layer three. The nose is going to be layer four and the hair, actually the hair will go under the glasses. I might make the hair a part of layer two. So now, so that's a change that I'm going to have to make in my plan. So I'll make the hair part of layer two. I'll just cut it all out as one piece. But I do have my four layers. Like I said, layer one is the ears, layer two is the face, three is the goatee and the glasses, and then layer four is the nose. All right, moving you again. So once your mock-up checks out, stage one of construction, step three, you're going to take this piece of foam board and this is what you're going to cut your pieces out of. So you are literally just going to draw and I would say for, for my design, my head might be half of this sheet, and then the other half I can use um, to make the goatee and the glasses and all that stuff. So the head, or on my mock-up, the layer two, this piece, I'm going to put that right here. Now don't do this. When you have a sheet of paper and you need to cut a bunch of pieces out of it, the first piece you cut, don't draw it in the middle. Draw that, the head piece or whatever it is you're cutting. Try to squeeze it in as close to the edge as you can so you save all that extra paper for the other parts of it. Otherwise, you'll burn through uh, your materials and you may or may not, I may or may not have enough to support your, your project. So, after you get all of your pieces cut out of this, and to cut through this, I would suggest using an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife, something like this. If you're in my classroom, make sure you put a cutting mat underneath. Or, uh, if you're doing this at home, um, you can go, the dollar store sells uh, X-Acto knives. Uh, they're not as good, uh, but they're, they're not as sturdy, but they'll still cut through. Or you can also do this on just a, a piece of brown corrugated uh, cardboard and chew through it with scissors if you need to do that as well. That will work. Because once you get your pieces made out of the foam or the cardboard or whatever, You'll trace each piece individually on a sheet of white construction paper. And from here, you can use marker, you can use paint, you can use whatever you have, and you can color these pieces. So once they're on here, you color them, then you cut them out, and then glue them to your foam board. So this, here's another example of a piece. So there are no eyes on this yet. So this is what it should look like. And you can see that some of these, this is an old example. You can see the paper starting to peel up, but that's, that's what she did. So she made her pieces out of the foam. She traced them all and painted them on this. And then she cut them out and put them on like decals. So this is stage five. Now all we have to do is add the eyes. So for that, I'm going to move you again. What I'm going to do is you'll use another piece of board. 
and in this case it's mat board so I've cut this mat board to just the right size so that it's not visible behind the head and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to stand I'm going to look directly over top of this and I'm going to put two dots right in the middle just just as guide uh, as guides so that's where the pupils are going to be and when I draw my pupils I mean you could do fancy stuff for the pupils in this case I'm not going to the only fancy thing I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white spot and that's gonna look like a reflection so that's what the pupils look like and in addition to cutting this to size, what I've also done is off the end of this, I cut, so the distance from here to here is one inch. So, so these are one inch tall by however long they are, it doesn't matter. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna glue these here and then I'll show you how to attach them. It's very, very easy. I'll show you how to put the eye on. So I'm going to go get some hot glue and I'm going to run the hot glue here and here and I'm going to stick it on. Be right back. So there we are. I've got that built. So the, the, the hot glue is pretty dry. And now the last thing I would do is I would again take my hot glue gun and I would put a line of hot glue here and here and then again you want to stand directly over this and drop it on and then those eyes would be glued and the reason that we it, actually the reason that we use these pieces is because that's the perspective that we use to make those eyes move behind it so uh, let's see if I can hold this up, I'll put it down. Let's see if I can hold this one in place. And there you go. It works. Perfect. So that's how to do, that's start to back with the Mona Lisa eyes sculpture. So if you have any questions, come see me, but that's it. So good luck, have fun.